Hi, welcome to ACS Composite. My name is Joseph, and this is our C8 2020 Corvette. In this video, we'll be talking about spoilers. This particular vehicle does have the Z51 option, and the most popular or the most visual dominant feature is the Z51 rear spoiler. Some people love it, some people hate it. It is probably the single item that customers point out to us that they'd like to see different options. So what we've done is we've designed a family of different spoiler options for the vehicle. This particular spoiler was designed to generate some downforce. So we've gone the other way. For the guys that basically wanna go for a cleaner look, for the non-Z51 guys that basically wanna step it up but don't wanna go overboard like this one, or for the guys that simply wanna get the most drag efficient uh, aero component. So what we've done is designed a new spoiler as a replacement to this unit. The new spoiler is basically much slicker and cleaner than the current layout. So we'll be walking through the installation and obviously the final review of the whole product. Our new C8 spoiler is inspired by this very small wicker that's here. What we've done is we've enhanced it and pulled it back without generating any drag. So it is the most aero efficient spoiler if we're talking about drag coefficient. Uh, ideal for guys that want to do top speed runs or drag racing. So it is a much cleaner look, but it does have some science behind it. So right now what we're going to do is walk you through the installation of the spoiler. To do this, the whole rear clip does have to come off. If you do have a vehicle without a Z51 spoiler, you do have to basically drill the holes before disassembly. We supply you a template, it references all the surfaces, and there are six holes that need to be drilled. This is true if you're also installing a Z51 or the GM accessory high wing. So the mounting pattern is the same between all three spoilers, which is really a cool thing. It is a reversible mod, so at one point you could go back to stock, unless you're going back to a no spoiler setup. So we'll be walking through the whole layout, all the bolts, all the nuts, and little tips to try to pull it out, and finally the complete review. So the first step to the bumper removal is our setup. We do need to raise the car off the ground and, and set it on jack stands. We've already done this, and uh, we will have a video showing you how to properly jack up the C8, so you could watch that. But the first step is to do this so you could access the fasteners behind. First step is gonna to be to take out all the fasteners at the bottom of uh, the fascia. So basically, we have some T15s that are here and some seven millimeters in the back. So if you start at one end and work your way around, remove all the fasteners and uh, that'll take care of the bottom portion. Next step is to remove the trim bezel. Whether you have a splash guard or the trim bezel, they come out the exact same way. There's a seven millimeter screw we took out earlier when we did the bottom portion. And the particular thing with this one is you do want to use a trim tool. And I'm using a clip removal. What I've noticed with these, unlike the C7, you can't just pry them out because you could break the bracket. So this is how I remove it. This exposes a series of T15s. And what we're doing is getting access to the quarter to fascia. So I don't have to remove the whole wheel liner. I'm only taking out the fasteners in the back portion and I'll be folding the felt like liner. I could feel on this flange here, there's a seven millimeter screw right here, another one here. And then there's a 10 mounted on a stud. I'd say that's the most difficult item. And the passenger side is the hardest of the two. So there's your fastener. I have a second seven millimeter, which is right here. I'm going with a ratchet. Got it. And now for the hardest one is a 10, 10 millimeter, which is about here mounted on a stud. It is a pretty long stud, so you'll need some patience. So I was able to untighten that 10 millimeter nut and luckily I could finish it off by hand holding a socket. So 
So now for the home stretch for the fasteners, we have the top leading edge, T15, and the two little ones, which are easy to forget, right in the corner. So I'm gonna start at one end and work to the other side. So I'm ready to pull the bumper off. And uh, I'd say the one thing to worry about is the stud that's here. That stud is pointing downwards. So you actually have to sort of lift and down to get it off the car. I've disengaged the bumper by unclipping the two ends and now I'm just pulling it, resting it onto the pad. There's a, a series of um, light switches or harnesses that need to be unplugged along with the rear tail lights. So the bumper's off and basically the clips, the push clips are holding me back. So I'm using a fork just so I could get a little bit of wiggle room with the bumper. So to unplug the wire harness, you have a red locking tab. You have to pull it out and this becomes your pushing to release the tab inside. And the same thing with this one. Red tab unlocked and I feel the lock disengaging and off she goes. So the spoiler is mounted via some nuts and bolts that are located right above the tail lights. So it's easier to just simply remove the tail light and the brake light so you have working room. Tail light harness, again, red tab. You have your release mechanism on it and you get it off. Seven millimeter, seven millimeter screws on its perimeter. And there is one pine tree uh, harness or pine tree cone that's right here. And the tail lights are free. Same thing for the other side. So we're on the home stretch of removing the rear spoiler and we're just looking for the fasteners. There's a total of six and we have basically a bolt, a nut, bolts in the center and the same thing on the other side. Once we remove that, there is a little bit of two-way tape so you'll see me pry to get it out but you should be able to pry the two corners and then focus on the middle. At this point, we have no mechanical fasteners for the spoiler. We are simply relying on the two-way tape to hold it on. So the ends is the easiest. There we go. So stock spoiler off. We're now getting it ready to put on the new one. So the spoiler is off the car. We're gonna clean the surface and basically decontaminate it. So we're gonna use again an alcohol solution to de-wax it. And we have a brand new spoiler. So here it is. It's our zero drag spoiler. So basically it doesn't generate downforce. So it's ideal for drag racers or top speed or for a sleek look. Um, it mounts the exact same way as stock. So we're using all the same mounting points. We have our 10 millimeter nuts and we have two bolts on either end. This was a Z51 car, so the car was already pre-drilled. If it wasn't, uh, you would have drilled all these holes out. So now it's just a matter of slipping it on. Again, we're gonna be careful to keep the red pull tabs of the two-way tape in uh, accessible so we could pull it out once it's semi-fastened and then it's reassembly. Since it mounts using all the OEM points, uh, pretty simple. I basically start at one end, set my stud in and guide. The only thing to worry about is to keep my two-way tape peel flanges accessible. I'm gonna put one of my 10 millimeter fasteners on just so I don't drop it.
I don't want to over tighten any of my fasteners because I do have to peel the two-way tape. So I just want to engage my threads. I can now pull my two-way tape. So my two-way tape is all out. I'm now ready to tighten all my fasteners. We're already at the reassembly portion of the install. So I'm gonna be putting back my brake light or my center brake light. So during this assembly, I was basically sorting my uh, screws per item. So I have a family. There are different lengths between the lights, the brake lights and the undercarriage. So they're all seven millimeter, but different lengths and different washers. So you do want to keep everything separate. When reinstalling the tail light, you have to be careful. This actually sits inside the fascia. So I'm paying more attention to that corner. I don't want to scratch the fascia. It's also a good opportunity to detail or clean because those crevices usually don't reach. Reconnect the brake light, clip and the locking tab. I could reinstall the push pin in its hole and down to the other side. So obviously before we clip the bumper back on, I unplugged three harnesses with the red tabs to be locked in and they need to be slid onto the supporting tab. Double checking that all the wires are properly connected and every single pine cone is uh, reclipped. We're gonna re-slide it onto the car. We're gonna, spay, we're gonna pay special attention to this stud. Since it's pointing downwards, it's not natural for us to go clip. So it does go into this key slot right here. And here we go. As you reinstall the T15s for the bumper, I'm actually using the squeeze mark on the plastic to locate it. This is gonna ensure I get a right bumper to tailgate or hood panel uh, gap. So you can actually see it. And if it's off, I actually push it into position. And this saves me having to uh, trial fit or go back and forth trying to adjust it. And the quarter to bumper, which is an easy one to forget. So we're back to the hard one, which is, uh, I think, the 10 millimeter located here on the stud. As I do this one, I, I check my gap. There's a little bit of room, so I can actually keep a tangent. That little seven millimeter is gonna help me. But I'd rather start with the stud, 
get it uh, at least semi-tightened and then put my two sevens holding it into position so I could have a nice flush surface. I have it hand tight. I'm gonna now install my seven millimeter small screw, so the small washered one. I'm flush, I'm happy, and we tighten. We're folding the liner black back in its spot. These are now the T15s with the large washers. The mud flap, simple. The tab into the liner. Line up the clips and go slowly. The, plas the plastic is very flexible, so. We're going to carry on installing the bolts at the bottom. Same thing for the other side and the wheels will go on. So I'll complete the side, but the rest is pretty much a duplication of what I just did. So there you have it. We've installed our new ACS C8 spoiler and uh, we could appreciate how it really matches the lines of the car. From the body line on the deck that flows into it to the extended uh, speedster look, uh, we have the matching lines that really go pick up the features around the taillights and just a, a sleeker look than the stock Z51 spoiler. So it's really filling up that gap between a non-spoiled car and a Z51 spoiler, giving you what we think a balanced look without excessive downforce. So if you're looking for a slick, slim, streamlined look, uh, this is definitely a part to consider for your new mid-engine Corvette.